do a quick update on my Robinhood account. You know, I've had a few bad trades over the last few weeks and now my account has settled back and now I've been thinking about how am I going to rebuild my account. I might go back to my old strategy of the covered calls. I mean, for like three months, I was making like five to ten percent. It was ridiculous. I mean, all the premiums have dropped on the covered calls now. They're not paying as much. Everything has been kind of choppy lately. And uh, I've turned towards more of a leap option strategy. And um, I've made a few mistakes there as well selling options on my leap options and um uh one of them is doing fairly well um once i get out of this obligation and uh get get that out of the way i'm going to stop selling uh calls against my leap options just because it caps it off and when it gets to a certain point you have to buy it back for more money so basically you're picking up pennies and occasionally you have to pay dollars to get it back and overall with the the market the way it is it's not the best strategy right now i might revisit the strategy later but i had to um had to raise some money to lower my strike prices on my leap option so i did that by selling calls against it and uh like i said um i had to buy some of them back for more money but um i got you know the leap options at lower strike prices and you know once i get everything straightened out I'll, I'll feel a little bit better you know my um amd uh iron condor uh on the last day it went out of the money and i should have closed that out early so um just not being greedy being more patient you know those mistakes but i'll go through you know, some of uh some of my positions i put on um so the one that's been doing the best so far was been on um, lamb lamb research right here this sleep option for a 640 call has gone in the money and i originally paid 59.55 for it, and now it's worth um 10,000 well 10528 or uh, ten thousand five hundred twenty-eight dollars. It's up about seventy-six point seven nine percent. It's it's moving pretty well, and it's still like you like you can see it's still got till the end of the year to to raise value. And what's so special about Lamb Research is they make the products that semiconductor companies need to make their you know semiconductors and the computer chips so they make the equipment that makes the chips physically and there's such a high demand right now i believe there's like three or four companies that do that applied materials would be another one that does this um asml is another company that does this for like um phone chips and stuff but yeah as you can see the last week or so uh, let me go to lamb research itself and with this being such an expensive option you know um let's see last week it's up two percent but 1367 with that being such an expensive option a two percent gain is worth a thousand three hundred and sixty seven dollars so you can see if i have a ten percent push uh, like last month or so or 22 percent push that would be worth like twelve thousand dollars so if it went up another 22 percent that would raise my option value another twelve thousand dollars so this this has the potential to be uh a really a, an account changer and to make up for some of my bad trades you know so um i don't know what the demand will be for the rest of the year but pretty i assume would be pretty high with the the semiconductor shortage going on and with this being you know one of the more and more expensive options i'm very optimistic that this could run up to you know eight hundred dollars you know that option would be worth at least sixteen thousand if not more so you know over the last three months it's done really well and you know if it does continues to do well you know that's another sixteen thousand i could add to this value of this option and you know it could really 
pay for that bad trade I had. And, but we'll see, you know, nothing's guaranteed, especially in this market. You see over the last year, it's it's gone up quite substantially. Um, like I said, Applied Materials is another company that does the same thing. Um, if you could see some of my other positions, SOS, a mining company, I don't really expect too much for that. I bought that to sell options against, actually, but I'm just going to leave it alone. Palantir has been struggling. Um, NEO is struggling. IPOE, once it completes the merger, it'll be a, a fintech company called SoFi, which has the potential you know, to be much higher. Um, GSAT was just a something i picked up when i was watching youtube a lot um i kind of stopped watching youtube so much to get advice just because i mean they're so recycled the plays and they're just what's hot during that week but cciv is a uh, loose motors they have potential you know in the electric vehicle space bngo is a biotech company that does genomics that does gene editing and that type of stuff a lot of future potential uh amd is one i'm really bullish on um that's a hundred dollar call for uh two years out it's trading i think around 83 dollars 84 dollars right now and i think after it reports earnings it should should go up substantially you know i put a yolo bet of four buys at 185 you know two years out so if it does end up you know doubling or whatever that might be you know home run play that was just kind of I don't know a YOLO I usually don't do that but I know it was just like a thousand dollars or whatever to buy those four calls and I think you know with the demand AMD might be more of a rival to NVIDIA might you know overtake a lot of the market of Intel I think they're a really solid company. They do have the potential to double in the next two years. Um, they're growing a lot faster than Intel, a lot faster than NVIDIA, and they're acquiring another company in the sector pretty soon. So that's a company to look out for. Of course, Lamb Research, I went over. Uh, Lemonade, trading around the $92 range right now. Um, yeah, this 90 call, they were uh, uh, as high as $180, so... You know, if they could get anywhere near their 52 week high, you know, that could turn into a four or five thousand dollar gain or option. Um, the main catalyst that they have is uh, they're planned against a car insurance, they have a disruptive model of how they sell their insurance, and um, yeah, they're one of these disruptive companies that kind of like what Kathy Woods looks for, or whatever. Um, Fiverr. Fiverr is run up from the $200 strike price. Of course, I had to, to sell some options to get that. So I have to play with, you know, moving the option I sold to get that strike price. But um, Fiverr was as high as $320. So, you know, they'll make that, you know, a ten to $12,000 option if it got anywhere in the year next to its 52-week highs. Uh, Cleveland Cliffs is a material iron ore mining company um, with this sector rotation they're all prime for growth uh, they had a, a big earnings call that pushed this into the money uh, went pulled back recently I think it's around 18 and a half right now I mean this is not showing you this is showing you my strike call price not the actual price Airbnb I bought this option when it was trading around 200. It's trading around 180 right now. I think it could get to 240. Um, I might have to move that strike price down um, when it's a little cheaper, or whatever. If it pulls back anymore, I probably will move the strike price down. But I got limited funds right now. Um, Airbnb is a huge recovery play. I think it does have around a 240, 250 price target long term. Um, yeah, I might have to buy more time on that. I might roll that into a two-year option. Um, yeah, I bought that out of the money. So, um, just going to wait on the price action, wait on some of the earnings in the future. I think Airbnb will be a good recovery play. It just depends on what happens. Skills. Uh, skills is a disruptive 
um, gaming slash gambling company. You know, they got a lot of good things going on year over year growth. It's just a matter of getting that one earnings report, that one catalyst that can shoot it back up to its this 52 week high at 40, which would make this a, you know, a two, three thousand dollar option. Um, Futu is a fintech company out of China. Um, I, like I said, I sold options to get it down to the strike price. Now I got to have the obligation to buy back. I'm moving them up so where they're out of the money, but paying a little money into each week. So I'm going to try to keep that out of the money on the, uh, the sell side of it. So I could, uh, you know, get the full money of that option. Think of what I'm saying is kind of like a debit spread and I'm moving that debit spread up as time goes on to keep it out of the money. The, the sell portion of that debit spread. But uh, yeah, they've been as high as 200. So, you know, that would make that an $8,000 option. I think there's trading around 150 right now. Um, Idex Labs. I got that off the Motley Fool. I did that as a calendar spread. Um yeah as long as that goes up towards 600 i could sell it um i don't expect too much of a gain from that but right now it's trading around 500 we'll see if it if it gets uh if it gets any high earnings or catalysts I'll, that's a, a veterinarian equipment company um kind of like zoomedica but more established um yeah it has the potential to run up um, team is another one I got off the Motley Fool. Um, yeah, it's another. If it could make the same gains it made last year, it might. I put it as a calendar spread. Um, we'll see. It's kind of an experiment. Low, low money entry into an option. Basically, uh, CNRT, just another uh, company I got off of YouTube. SOS, I did this as a kind of a way to sell options. That that was the whole plan all the time. Um, I have to let that gain some value back up before selling the options. But yeah, I've taken quite a few premium off that. So even though that shows a, a, a quite a high negative, in the long run, it'll probably just even out. If it gains some value, then I'll make some money and I'll consider holding in, not selling options if it gets hot and try to, to ride the value up. We'll see. Futu, this is the sell. I'm talking about 150 uh, My strike price on my options, uh, long-term options, 120 So I'm kind of moving that up. I'll move this to 155 160 as it gains more value. It usually costs about a third to half what you move it up so if you move it up five which would be 500 it might cost you 200 dollars to move up the five but you'll get that from your you know your longer term option so it's worth it it's kind of a poor way it's kind of a rolling uh debit spread if you want to think of it that way um it's a way to kind of play things as they happen rather than you know putting all the money forward on the long-term option so uh that might be kind of confusing i might have a video going over that strategy later vgac uh virgin galactic spac um 23 and me at this point it's pretty useless valueless um uh, this is the 220 sell on Fiverr. That's the way I got my strike price down to 200. I think Fiverr is around 226 right now. Like I said, to move up to 230, it probably cost me around $300. Um, it's worth it as long as it stays up that way. This expires in July, so I need to move it up higher than it, Fiverr's current value, and then expires worthless. And then I got the the back end option. Um, free of all sales. That's why I'm going to stop selling because it's just too unpredictable. I don't want to cap my gains to make a few bucks along the way. I mean, at first I kind of did that a little bit because the market was crashing. Now that the market's kind of all over the place, it's not worth picking up a few bucks uh, to cap your gains. 
But um, I'll look at the candlesticks in the future and see if I could kind of scrap off a few bucks on some of these down weeks or low volume weeks. But we'll see. Um, yeah, all these options are kind of either sells or um, mostly sells or just like not really pertinent to my overall account. Won't really have an impact. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Lamb Research could really be an account changer long term. You know, a lot of people are optimistic about Palantir, uh, Neo, IPOE, CCIV, BNGO. I'm really optimistic about AMD long term. Um, Fivers might be really good long term. Cleveland Cliffs in environment. Uh, a, uh, a Airbnb is a recovery play. Oh, Futu's been kind of hot lately, so, you know, there's potential there, but I want to get back when I get more money. I can't really put more money in my account for the next, like, two or three months, but when I do, I want to kind of segregate it out to where I can do more covered calls to get that, you know, that kind of gentle increase in my account and um, the compound interest, and I keep the long-term options uh, as maybe half my account as well for that, that, you know, that home run potential that, you know, um, land research is on its way to being the, the home run where I'm, you know, I make 10 or $20,000 or some ridiculous long term, um, that you can't make when a stock doubles. That's what the, the value of leaps, but then again, leaps are a lot more risky. Um, you got to really manage the time decay as well and you gotta be kind of right that's why i'm looking at that airbnb uh leap option and it kind of makes me a little nervous with how price action is going so i might either lower that strike or add more time to it or do something with it amd of course this is kind of like my uh optimistic yolo home run to where if, if somehow amd goes up to 200 dollars it's like a, a life changing gain or whatever. We'll see. Um, I've seen people do that with Tesla where they bought a leap worth yeah, for like four or five hundred dollars. And, you know, a year later, all of a sudden that four or five hundred dollars worth two hundred thousand or something ridiculous. But that's kind of what inspired me that day. I mean, it's not the smartest thing to do. It's not the highest probability. But, you know. I made some really, really bad mistakes trading. I'm glad I made them early on. Um, I'm still up overall. Um, I calculate out my percentage. It's not being the S&P 500. I think the S&P 500 is up like 17%. Um, I'm up like maybe 12% of what I put into my account. And it's been less than a year. But I use the dates I started. Um... But yeah, if I push this up back to where I was, I was at double the value of what I put in my account in less than six months doing that covered call strategy. And I picked one really, really bad one. And I was just too, I guess, stubborn because I had so much success to realize that how bad of a mistake that was. And that's kind of like the difference. And I got really impatient with some of my other positions as well because they weren't weren't really making any money they were really away from what i paid from them so i wasn't really pulling in premium so i should have been a little more patient my account would be around fifty five thousand dollars right now if i was more patient but you know i probably wouldn't have bought lamb research if i didn't sell that option so um it's kind of weird if lamb research runs up and becomes a huge gainer it might my worst trade might be canceled out or one of my better trades because I used the premium I pulled in to buy that land research call and to buy that Airbnb call. So if those two somehow you know make me twenty grand or so, it it wipe out that really bad trade. And I, like I said, I made some bad iron condors. I made another bad one with with Harley Davidson because it was stuck in such a range and all of a sudden the thing about 
iron condors it could be stuck in a range and all of a sudden this catalyst comes out of nowhere and it boosts the price so it could be in this range for you know two three four months and all of a sudden you know one of these analysts all of a sudden comes out and says oh it's a buy now and all of a sudden it's up so um i might get out of this for a, a heavy loss or i might just like ride in see if it goes back down but the amd one really hurt because it was in that range the entire time except for that last day it pushed out of that range and if i had sold it the day before i would have took 80 percent of my profit so that's a lesson learned so i'm kind of learning these lessons in trading as i go and i think i'm going to be a really effective trader long term um way better than most of these other people on youtube it's just learning these lessons learning patience learning humility um i'm i know the techniques i know how to read the candles i just something's not clicking quite the way it was when i first started i mean there was a bull market okay it was a bull market when i first started but something's gonna click along the way I'm going to find a strategy that works. I mean, I think the covered call strategy really worked a lot for me. And I'm like, I might go back to it with this leap option strategy and uh, look at some of the other option strategies as well. Um, think long term, I'm going to be all right. As long as I, you know, put more of an emphasis to preserve my capital. I was looking at some of the other stocks that might be better suited for selling uh selling these calls against the uh, leap options um the only one i found that might work i might do it was a uh, canadian pacific railway because of how you know gentle it increases it's been just like this gentle uptrend the entire time so if you had a leap option and you sold you know the break even price on it it won't hurt you if it get called away i mean you could just roll it over a little bit move it up or whatever i'm trying to think of a strategy that might work to where you can sell options against options but not necessarily cap you as much or hurt you as much um so or just like selling covered calls if you want to just have something a little safer going into these railroad companies and you know the premiums aren't as much but you know having a steady increase is way better than you know all of a sudden losing you know 75 percent on something you were in like i did with that biotech company i mean you look it's only one percent but if you get one percent every week which you won't but if you get say you no know, 20 25 percent at something safe over a year you know that 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 might be worth it but that's just some thoughts um looking at some other strategies trying to be a little outside the box um looking less at what other people are doing and just kind of trying to formulate my own strategies and coming up with my own system something that works for me i'm i'm having pretty good success minus a couple of just really bad mistakes so if i could put this all together you know there's no reason i can't get 100 200 even 400 percent on a really good year and really compound my accounting you know getting that over three or four years that could really add up to uh to millions so that's just an optimistic outlook um we'll see you know we'll see um try to do more uh fundamental analysis as well to find some of these other you know good companies kind of putting all together use watch lists find the dips um yeah so there's a there's a lot of work i need to do not quite there yet but i think i could come up with some really good strategies in the future um yeah so that's kind of where i'm at in documenting my journey you know like i said i'm trying to do my own thing now do my own research and go from there